follow Sibia our best again. of five into Fischio. The question you yeah. had, will the bands change? The answer is no. But Sivir first pick for Fnatic. Yeah, so they don't mind giving Hillesang his thresh because Sivir has been so important between these two teams here. I was just looking at them when they walked back on stage. Both teams smiling, laughing, you know, having a bit of fun. Despite having to play the game five now of the EU LCS finals, nobody seemed nervous. They all seem very cool. And therefore, I'm not expecting any uh, any nerves, honestly, going into this game. I think both teams are now settled on the stage, gotten used to the crowd. Let's see who's the best. Glad you think so, because I'm still getting used to this crowd. They have been phenomenal all weekend long. And both series going to five, both semi-final series going to five. We have been so fortunate with our spring split playoffs. The first two lock-ins says engage, there's disengage, there's a beefy front line. It is the ingredients of success that Unicorns have run before. It is the start of a poke composition with the way Unicorns normally draft, with the Braum now as disengage for them. But that's most likely what Fnatic wants them to play. Sejuani is open now for Rainover. If you go Sejuani, severe, and then you can pick Nautilus even as a support, you have so much dive on the Unicorns of Love, and we know they like to pick the slow scaling mid laners in that comp. Sivir is gonna stop that from happening and just force fights on you. I would have gone Sejuani Nautilus here if I'm Fnatic. Could also just take early Rumble, but I was expecting that to come later, honestly. Don't think they had to show it already. They have rain over, as well as Huni, you just saw their faces on camera. But this is what we talked about with the Rumble. Don't play this. Shivana top, <laughs> when all you want to do is kill Power of Evil and Valix. This does give Sejuani four Unicorns of Love. And Rumble Gragas, it, it is somewhat of a weird combo. One missed ulti from Rainover can honestly move people out of the Equalizer from Febivan. But I guess maybe they were afraid of Unicorns taking it and just packing like full, full disengage. New AD carry for Vardax, he realizes, okay, if I play Jinx, I'm gonna melt in every fight. I have to take something with mobility, something that can heal for itself. That's gonna be the illusion here for him. But Unicorn, such a beefy, beefy setup. You need to see how they round out their team composition. Power of Evil once again. Last pick. We'll see what he decides to run in that middle lane. Fnatic have got 20 seconds left to round out their team composition. That works too. That works too. All sorts of engage and damage. Yellow Star going back to Honestly, his first signature champion. Yeah. When he transitioned to support, he was a few, okay. ago. Oh, a few seconds swapping it out. It was a Nautilus you expected earlier. Yeah. It will fulfill a similar sort of role. Close to calling it. Close. They just swapped it around a little bit and took Gragas over the Sejuani. If Unicorns log in Orianna, it is very, very safe. It's very late game focused from them. Long drawn out team fights where you kite, you dodge the all in from Fnatic. The so, problem is it takes such a long time to scale. Except it doesn't when the game four happens and they get three man glacial prisons at 15 minutes. True, but that was against a Cassidy in the mid lanes. A lot easier to push against him and fight against him than compared to an Ari, compared to a Rumble. Look at the scaling between Shivana top and Rumble. You spike so much earlier with the early magic penetration. Fnatic are looking to fight against the Unicorns a lot and say, if you want to go full late game, we're going to make sure you never reach it. This is going to be SK versus Unicorns again as a game five. SK with the early game, the one they want to snowball. Unicorns with the late game scaling, they want to hold off, they want to try and trade towers for dragons, get the gold needed, and then pull off a shockwave here and there, maybe get a pentacle as well, because why not? We're going to game five anyway. And you owe me a kiss. We'll have to hold off on that one as we do see the trophy one last time. Daylor and Sheepy leaving the stage as their teams will do battle. Again, for the very last time on Summoner's Rift in the Springs, but the winner, 90 championship points, is one step closer to Worlds, and they will represent Europe yeah. on the international stage at the mid-season Invitational. You have one last chance to jump on Twitter. Tell us who you think will win. The crowd on your screen right now has believed in the unicorns of love all day long. You at home screaming their name as well. Fnatic are looking to make it four. Unicorns 
looking to prevent that. Look at the start here from Huni. Both armor and five potions. That's very standard if you want a lane swap on it. So Fnatic potentially setting up for that. And then I would assume they're going for a fast push to try and end the laning phase as early as possible and not allow Unicorns to sit back with some defensive wards and just farm it for 15, 20 minutes. We have to see what they do. Otherwise, the Cloth Armor is not going to do a whole lot against the Maokai. That would have been a Ruby Crystal if you were aiming for the one-on-one -on -one setup for Huni. Placing that deep ward here to see. No, just placing Yellow Star. He has no ward. So well, we did say there's nothing he can't do. He wants to be a ward. Hell, he can be a ward. We do see that Huni continues to sit up in that top lane, and Vardags and Hillisang are in fact the dual lane that's swapping yeah. away. So, so Fnatic is, reading the situation well. Yeah, exactly. This is Fnatic just expecting or predicting this swap from Unicorns of Love. And will have that cloth armor, five potion rumble to sit and be a whole lot beefier. And also, what you can do now, because you got so much sustain with the potions, you can be pretty greedy walking in, trying to get a last hit, make sure you're always in XP range, and then you got the five potions and a teleport to keep yourself healthy. Maokai won't have the same luxury in the bottom lane. He's obviously going to do the camp and get the level two. Huni is just going to help rain over. I sincerely hope you guys at home can hear that. 5,000 people chanting Huni's name. I'm fortunate enough to be able to see his face from where I'm standing, and it is as cold as ice. You can see it on the player cam, bottom left. The only focus is on the prize, is on the title. And we'll see who comes out ahead in this lane swap. Early ward here from Hillesang. We'll move into the jungle. Blue buff was secured by Rainover already. And we do see Hillesang is gonna Might be caught out. stun up Huni in a second. Here's this Chachi. is a teleport from Visa Chachi. He's gonna go very aggressive at level two. That's a flash away from Huni. Sapling goes out. He's not gonna be able to get the stun again. Ignite is ticking. 100 hit points. That's a wow. And Hillesang's gonna tank it up. Unicorns of Love with a massive play to secure first blood. But keep in mind, Chachi did not get an assist. No, and he's not gonna get any farm or anything on the bottom lane. Yellow Star. And still by can now push it in. You see them already grouping up the minions, just making sure they can deny everything from Chachi. Not sure how Huni was caught out in the river instead of just walking through the lane to his own tower after spotting the two guys on top. But all these minions are gonna die. And there's nothing Chachi can do about it. He's gonna try and see if he can go for another kill on Huni. As him to say, if I'm not getting farm, you're not getting farm either. Wow, there's no flash available for Huni, so if he puts himself in a dangerous position, possibility is there. The duo of Lucian and Brahm almost guaranteed to get those stuns. Thanks to Hillesang's passive, those concussive blows, but Huni is not going to get close enough to get caught out, I believe. You can see Yellow Star's coming up to respond. Will they get the tower? Let's keep an eye on that HP. Down to about a third. The minions are slowly, slowly being killed away. I think Huni should be able to get some flame spitter damage and clear them out before yeah. the tower secured. Super good response from Fnatic. Defending the tower and Chachi still sitting there, gaining absolutely nothing. He has to recall and walk all the way back to the bottom lane if he wants any farm. And really, even if the lane swap ends early, I think that's what Fnatic wants anyway. So by them fast pushing the bottom lane and Unicorns fast pushing top, it's okay for Fnatic, because they don't want Unicorns to sit back and farm for 15 minutes. They want to force fights. You have an RF, you have the pick potential, you got the Rumble. You got the Sivir too. I mean, you got so many ways of starting fights and you have so many strong early to mid-game champions. Sejuani, the only one getting farm on the bottom side, forcing a flash as well. Jungle is power evil. very impactful thus far. And you saw how safe that gang was because they knew Kikis was sitting bot lane to take the wave. So they could go for that gang in mid lane and not have to fear for anything. They can even take a second one. Kiki's gonna try his luck on the bottom side though. Will be spotted. Wow, that flash body slam wasn't able to connect with Power of Evil. That was a little bit. He didn't time the minion waves either from Rain over. There's no way for Fitman to charm him because the minions were walking in front of Power of Evil as well. So just a waste of flash from Rain over. The only downside for Fnatic now is the fact that Huni died, gave over first blood and the lead to Unicorns of Love. And also, one more thing's happening. Chachi has been able to get down and get his one-on-one -on -one lane. Sivir is only one level ahead of him, so he can't really zone him too much. So Unicorn's responding as well, and now finally getting farmed. 
on the top laner. Unicorn's going to clear out that ward. Vizachachi with flash available. Bebevin not yet level six. Getting close and he will get spotted out. So that roam from the Unicorns of Love does not pay off. With six minutes on the clock with Steel back in the bottom lane and the fact that Fnatic, once they get access to the ultimates, should be a very scary early to mid game team fight. You have to feel they're going to set their sights on Dragon. Yeah. Look what Unicorns are doing though to try and stop that from happening. First blood went over to Vardak, so he recalls very early on because he has enough for the BF sword. By him recalling, you force Steelback to do the same. If Steelback stays in the lane and try and push it into the tower over and over, he comes back, or oh, well, he meets Vardak in the lane with a Doran's Blade against the BF sword. That's not a fair trade. So by him recalling and going bottom lanes, Steelback had to do the same, could only pick up a pickaxe because he didn't get the first block goal. So that's a very, very smart move from Unicorns to now get the 2v2 control exactly like they did in the last game. And this should also make it harder for Fnatic to set up that dragon, at least just uncontested, because the Lucian will be able to trade so effectively with a Sivir. Well, we'll find out if Unicorns can set it up. Before that can happen, though, Kikis is going to move his way to Huni. Remember, huni has got no flash. Visit Chachi does. Is he going to root him? He flashes into place. The flash comes forth from Kikis in reply. Huni's in trouble. The sapling's going to slow him. Huni's got 300 hit points, 100 hit points. He should be going down. He does start to overheat his Kikis. is going to be getting the kill. Flail of the Northern Wind spinning. 0-2-0. Zero, zero. And it was... Visit Chachi that was camped earlier that allowed Fnatic to win. Now Unicorns are getting revenge by camping Huni. Yeah, and you can do this when you know your other lanes are doing just fine. Farmfest in the mid lane and advantage for you on the bottom side. So you can go for these ganks against the Rumble with no flash, no wards either from Huni being placed. Very, very good start for Unicorns of Love. Chachi, the man who was denied at first, turned it around, decided, you know what? Huni's not going to get any farm either. And by them just almost trading, even by not getting anything, Unicorns have managed to turn it into their favor with this AD carry back in the first spot. So, so smart of them to swap the lanes around now. I'm still waiting to see how this dragon battle turns out, Deficio. It is the deciding game, and Fnatic do have the slight edge. They've secured nine dragons this series, whereas Unicorns of Love have secured seven. The thing is, it's always been the team that's in control that has dictated who's getting those dragons, and we'll see whether or not that early VF Sword on Vardax will be enough to overcome what will eventually be the on-the-hunt equalizer empowered team fights from Fnatic. Like so, clockwork, they're setting it up. Talked about the dragon, what the Unicorns of Love is doing is just pushing one lane, the bottom lane here, try and keep them on the tower, and then they started. Fnatic can react to this one. Problem is, Rainover is out of mana and on the red buff. Had not been ready for it at least, they could have collapsed four members and taken the fight. This does mean Unicorn secured him. I'm even lying to you because I didn't see the TP disadvantage yeah, for Huni. Huni. Just TP so top. no matter what, Unicorns would secure that dragon and just really, really smart play. Good setup early on. That all came from that early back from Vardags and Hillisang. It did indeed, Trevor. We have to see if the rumble. Bebevin wants blood. He wants oh, the Raptor. He just wants the Raptor. What's Raptor Blood? There we go. Yeah. Rum is in the middle ground. Rum is one of those champions, though. Even if you do shut him down, he needs so little gold to be efficient or effective with the horning guys and basically just upgrade your boots and you're good to go in a fight. So it's not like Huni's out of the game. It's just been a good way of creating a lead for Unicorns and try and dodge around these mid-game dragons because what could have happened was Fnatic would just play standard, get that dragon because they were so much stronger early on, and then go towards the five before Unicorns could react in time and force them into these bad trades. Getting that first one stops that, or at least delays it for a long, long time. Wow, well, take a look at the items, Deficio. We're approaching 10 minutes and steal back off that. Swapping to that bottom lane, he's picked up two long swords very early on. We do see a needs large rod for Febivin in that middle lane. As he eats a shockwave but lands a charm, they're trading ignites. As you know, it is just Febivin that eats an ignite. Now Kikis, Glacial Prison is available. He throws it down. Rainover is in range. There goes the equalizer. That's a good one. Kikis is in trouble. Challenging Spite. The barrel's going to knock him against the wall. And Fnatic will get their first kill of the fight. It is Rainover that secures a kill credit. Kikis and Chachi, they don't have the most damage. I think we're hoping to find a lone Huni. We did see the power, at least, of the Rumble and some of the early damage that Gragas can provide despite being a Cinderhold tank. 
Early game is not terrible for him. Nice setup and nice counter game. Meanwhile, that bot tower as well, because Vilex went for Dragon and then back to base. It was open. It was all obviously very low from before in the 2v1 lane swap. But man, Steelback is going to be delayed in terms of his builds. That Infinity Edge is so delayed. He might just try and go for Brutalizer, farm up for BF Sword then, and aim for Ghostblade as the, as the second item. Which definitely is not what he prefers to do. He's one of those AD, carry, AD carries who always aim to get Phantom Dancer over Static Ship as well, and just have as much single target damage as possible in these team fights. That is going to be very, very delayed. We also see Febivan opting to go for that Luden's Echo first item. He really wants to put Fnatic on his back and find those solo kills. Febivan has just been such a breakout player for Fnatic all year long. He's had a, a, a brilliant impact regardless of the champion he's playing, whether it's Assassin or Mage. And he just seems to have such a good impact on the game. You could argue probably more consistent than Power of Evil, but equally as important for his team. I agree on that one, but if you do look at playoffs, I will have to give credit to Power of Evil as well for being on his game, honestly. There's been very, very few games in the playoffs where we said, oh, Power of Evil, he's underperforming here. I definitely do agree in the regular split, however. He had his bad games, and that was where Unicorns of Love seemed to always rely on him doing well. It's been different in the playoffs. There's been more players stepping up as carries than just Power of Evil, even though he's been the shining star on the team. Like Hillisang, just to name one of them, his Higgis, place. Glacial Prison, will it connect? The answer will be Xmithy. Sorry, no. Febivan able to spur a rush away. He actually goes aggressive. Hillisang jumps in, unable to get that Winter's Bite down. Febivan still got that charge of spur a rush. Let's be honest, Febivan dodged it. Yeah. Not kick is missed it. Good reaction time on the ulti. I'm not sure if he spotted kick is coming out from it, but at least he saw the ulti fly in the air. Jumps away, didn't want to take any chances. No dragon is alive, so they're just trying to contest some of the early vision here with no bot lane tower for Unicorns of Love. You always have to expect that the enemy AD carry want to go to your mid lane and start pushing it in. Oriana is one of those champions who can hold it for a long, long time, though. So Unicorns does have some freedom, freedom in that regard compared to, let's say, Cassidy from the last game of Fnatic where you just left completely useless defending. So even on gold. Dragon is spawning in a minute and a half. Take a look at the itemization for Steelback. He actually went for that BF sword. Deficio did not complete the Brutalizer. It's was for him, able though. to farm out enough. Yeah. So this, like when it, when it comes to AD carry builds, it's so much about how much gold do you have when you're back. Like how do you time your backs? With him at least getting enough of BF sword, he obviously says, okay, I don't need the Brutalizer now. I'll get the item I was aiming for in the first place. So good save for Steelback. Important that they've gotten a tower for him and quite some farm. Chachi's in trouble. Chachi's been bullied around by Huni this entire time they've been top. It hasn't affected his CS yet, but every time we look top, Chachi is just trying to farm up from underneath his own tower. Huni is relentless at pushing those minions in. Looking for the dive. Ulti is ready for Huni. They have they see the Unicorns of Love guys on the bottom side. Might just say, let's save the ulti and everything for the dragon and take that fight, which should be in our favor if we look at the comms. And that seems to be the strategy. No, no reason to take the chance, go for that dive, invest everything. Instead, roam down, be ready to contest the vision because Unicorns have gone here first, set up a few good wards. They don't really have a whole lot of pick potential on their side. Kikis, though, he's just charging in. He has found Steel back in Yellow Star. Kikis has got Glacial Prison available. He's going to lock them both up. Look at the backline. Febivitz creating a ruckus. Teleport from Fizzichachi comes down. Yellow Star does get dropped by Fizzichachi's vengeful maelstrom. Now Fardax and Power of Evil on the nice right side shockwave. of an equalizer. Shockwave gets the, the carries as Fardax secures his first kill. Now we see Hillisang trying to get away. Fardax in full retreat. He throws out the Light Slinger. Auto attacks going out. Fardax is dropped. It's Steel back against the kill. He was shut down earlier and Hillisang throws Throws up that unbreakable shield. Bebev is looking for more. He's going to get the speed boost from that orb of deception. Lands the charm and Fnatic gets four kills on the board for what I believe was the cost of two. Yeah, Unicorns here, they were trying to create a pick before Fnatic would set up a team fight. They went into the jungle at first and it looked okay with Kikis, but notice behind here, Power of Evil gets jumped by Febivan, so he's not there with the rest of his team. Valax joins him, and now it's just a fanatic show. It's a good shockwave from Power Beeble, but he goes down, and Unicorns of Love are not able 
to escape. Fnatic gets a lot of kills for this one. And that was exactly why they didn't dive to top lane, because they wanted that team fight. Well played by Fnatic. Dragon I get another still one. not secured. They do get the hook under Vizachachi. He throws down the Maelstrom. Raynova throws his body slam in. There's no Glacial Prism from Kikis, so he's unable to do anything more. What other ultimates are available? The Fisher not there either. It's all going to be on the Shockwave and Unicorns are allowed. They got the first Dragon. They're going to give this one up after they lost the primary tank. Fnatic arrest control in the deciding battle, securing their first Dragon of Game 5. That last little fight here, Unicorns of Love should have, should have accepted that Dragon was gone and just take the top tower instead. The tower is very low, they had minions already pushing in. What you need to do when you have to scale and comp and you're not in a good position to fight is you just give up those Dragons because you got the first one. You know there's a high chance of Fnatic killing you if you go in there and you just take a tower on the other side of the map because you benefit so much from the gold. That's why they're called late game carries because they need the gold <laughs> to be very effective. So for Unicorns here, by going down and taking another one, they didn't really gain any advantage and also lost the Dragon. So that was a misplay from them. And Fnatic using it to get the goal lead. Kikis will find Yellowstar again. And obviously this top tower is still very low if Unicorns does decide to group on it. I think a little bit of praise to Kikis for that one. His counter ganks in game three of the series were not... Ex uh, actually, he was, he was counter ganked excessively. And he's not necessarily been in place to respond to as many ganks. I think this has been a story of junglers finding weaknesses in their opponent's map play. Unicorns, they find themselves a small amount of gold down as we approach 20 minutes. For Fnatic, you have to wonder, is it enough of a lead considering how good Oriana, Maokai and Sejuani will continue to grow? Something you always talk about to Fisher. If you fall a little bit behind in that Maokai, you sit on the catalyst and just go tanky items yeah it's not your job to start fights you are more reacting to whatever to whatever the other team is doing and you're mainly focusing on kiting back anyway so just skipping the righteous glory for a moment and get some tanky stats can be very very good for you to at least tank something for your team Huni has gone straight out last. He must have had the goal for it when he went back. No magic penetration yet, despite being against the Maokai in lane and also the two tanks or three tanks even with the problem from the Unicorns of Love. It's obviously going to come in next. Does make him a bit safer, but the pen penetration is so important for Rumble in the early game. And while Fnatic, 2k gold ahead, you can say Unicorns it's not looking terrible in that sense. They can still sit back and farm up, and that's what they want to do. We have to remember the mid game is far from over. There's still a long time where Fnatic, composition wise, will be stronger. Fnatic are going to be able to defend this mid tower. Still two towers to zero as Unicorns unable to push any of their respective lanes in, get any sort of uh, presence in that area. Steelback and Bardax both sitting with their infinity edges and with three kills and two assists as well as tower gold. Steelback is in fact ahead. However, it does look like he's going to be going towards that Ghost Blade. Yeah. So that mid-game power of Sivir is going to get exemplified even more with the Ghost Blade. Will be a lot weaker late, though. So once again, it's about the mid-game for Fnatic. It's super annoying as an AD carry to pop your Ghost Blade and then see a Sejuani and a Maokai <laughs> just fly in your face and be like, yeah, that's not going to do a whole lot. Uh, Kikis will be looking to do that over and over. His ultimates in the previous game were absolutely fantastic. We do see that Haunting Guy is completed now for Huni. 122 CS is up a number, opposite number 128. And the respective teams just settling into slightly extended laning phase. We did see Febivan pushing up the top lane and Unicorns have been able to defend their middle out of turret. Yeah. But there's, there's not really been like um, pressure or focus from Fnatic on that lane yet. Oh, <laughs> in over. Almost. Well, what Fnatic is doing is just splitting out and making sure all the carries can get farmed. Rumble gets farmed bottom lane, Sibir gets farmed mid lane, and Ari gets farmed top lane. There's no real reason for them to group just yet, but they're waiting for the dragon to spawn. Once it comes alive, expect Febivan to move down from the top lane, sit with his team to create a pick before dragon even spawns with the early vision they're most likely going to set up from Fnatic, because that's why you want Ari with your team. She's so good at catching out targets who has to 
basically face check you because they won't have the ward down. You're sitting on a ping, you charm, you just one shot that one target with the rest of your team, and Dragon is yours. So you can push out the top lane once more and then start roaming down. He's gotten the form he needs, he's already come back to his. I mean, look at his items. Large rod, second one for him with the loot and Zeko already completed. His damage is absolutely insane. So look at him here on the minimap. Gonna move all the way down. And then Fnatic can start creating some picks. Unicorns of Love have no business to do around that dragon. They should just step away, be happy with the farm they're gonna get in these side lanes. Meanwhile, Febber might even wait a little bit. But if there's any chance of Unicorns fighting, he's gonna be there with his team. We have to keep our eyes on that one. Not just shoves the wave into Huni's waiting hands. He's deciding to back and spend a little bit of gold. Got himself around 400. Should pick up a pair of boots. Get some mobility in place if a fight were to break out. Does have teleport available, and for unicorns, the scuttle crab is going to help them out. But look at Feverman's positioning. Fnatic know the timer is almost there, and unicorns investing so much into vision. Yeah. To try to avoid that blind pick face check scenario. I would really have preferred from Fnatic to go into that dragon a minute earlier. Timed your backs correctly so you didn't have to recall 30 seconds before it even spawns. And you would be the one sitting with these wards here and the pick potential of the RE. Now you might have to take a straight on 5 on 5 team fight. You are still very, very strong, but it makes it a little bit harder for you at least. Instead of just creating that one easy pick or even just force unicorns completely away from the dragon in the first place and you secure it. Fippervin. We'll see that Unicorns are here, and now they're trying to contest for the wards. Huni's pushing top lane. Teleport is available. because Chachi plus Vardax have rejoined the rest of their team. Power of Evil using that dissonance to get movement speed and try threaten Yellow Star's positioning. They've actually started the dragon. So risky for Unicorns. Let's look for the teleport. Where is it coming? Unicorns have decided to bail away. Teleport comes onto the middle lane for Huni and Febivan continues to play the flank. Look for the ultimates. Unicorns have to fight as a unit together. So if they get flanked, it's very easy for Fnatic to split them up and just single them out with the Ari here. You gotta stay with your big tanks if you're the carries for Unicorns. And you cannot do that if you cannot protect your sides. While Unicorns are investing into the Dragon, Death John catches three. The Equalizer melts Unicorns of Love. The Flame Split is destroying. Vardex is in full retreat, but the Orbit Deception gets one. Shockwave only connects to right over, and Power of Evil is down. Fnatic convinced Convincingly win the team fight. Four kills, the mid turret, and they're gonna get the bottom in a turret as well. A wise man once said, don't fight dragons against a rumble. We just saw why. That ulti from Huni started the whole thing and then just a collapse from two different sides. There was nothing Unicorns could do. And the worst thing is, they don't have to fight those dragons. They don't have to start them. They want to wait. Trade. That top tower is still standing up there on 10% HP. That should have been your focus. Go, go, not dragons. Just look at it again. I mean, what do you expect him to do? Oriana has an Athene and a blasting one here, so she gets knocked up at first. And look at the damage wow. from Fnatic. Everything just piled onto Unicorns, and they have to run instantly. Nothing they could do in return. Fnatic deconstructs everything about the Unicorns of Love. Unicorns still yet to get a tower on the board, and they are now 5,000 gold down. They now need to do to Fnatic what Unicorns did to SK. And that is pull off a miracle. Shockwave of Baron. It will happen. Fnatic always goes for these early Barons here. If they think you're out of position, they place a ping on it, they start it. And then it's up to the Unicorns to react in time and not be caught in the engage of Fnatic. Unicorns did set their sights on that top tower. A little too late, maybe. And defensive play from Fnatic means Unicorns unable to secure that objective. Instead, they peel back to the middle lane, continue trying to farm their way up. 4-0-5 on Steelback Siver. Ghost played I Edge, pickaxe, and about a thousand gold to spend still. It's fun to see how important Sivir has been in this final here, because the team who had it were always able to pick a more mid game focus comp and then just force team fights whenever someone were too slow at scaling. And you never got to the point where you could really fight back. Both teams have been very good at closing out the games 
except for maybe the game of three of Fnatic, where they were taking a little bit easy. Apart from that, they have kept it very safe, but secure. I, I also think it's just a lot of props to Fnatic. It is. Bouncing back from a, a honestly heartbreaking loss to Unicorns in game four, picking a team composition with uh, maybe a soft cap on its scaling and, and the time limit of effectiveness, but just playing around their strengths so well and punishing Unicorns of Love. Yeah. When Unicorns have presented a target, Fnatic have hit a bullseye and destroyed the Unicorns. And that's exactly why a comp like this never really stops being effective. Because the carries will never be tanky enough to sit in a rumble ulti when there's a Nautilus ulti coming in as well. Like that engage potential from Fnatic will always be there, no matter how far into the game we get. The way Unicorns can win the late game one is instead if they team fight as a unit together with the two tanks in front, and then when engage happens, they back away, they kite back, kite back, they get out of the rumble ulti, and then they can start turning around because they have so much consistent damage from Orianna, from Lucian late game, with two Cinderhulk, or sorry, with one Cinderhulk and one Maokai, to just prolong the fights. But Fnatic will never hit a point where they can't win. If they manage to land their ultis correctly, they will melt someone from Unicorns of Love. Well, we did see some blue pings onto Baron Deficio. Fnatic maybe setting their sights on it. Unicorns have got decent wards around, but for Fnatic and their strong lead, where will they want to force a team fight? They've got more engage power from Rainover with Righteous yeah. Glory. They've got Yellow Star. He's picked himself up that locket, so any of the burst that's going to come out from Power of Evil is going to be significantly affected thanks to that locket. Fnatic, as you said, have got all the tools to play with. Top side of the map is the focus for Fnatic. It's where the two tier two towers are still alive. They've already started a push in the bottom lane. And as always, when you control that jungle, you get to time the minion waves when you want to rotate through the jungle very quickly, force your team to go back to base and all the way around the inhibitors if they want to move between the tier two towers. So you can move faster through the jungle. That gives you some damage on towers. You can even catch them out if they try and face check you in that jungle. And you have that barren threat, which is what Fnatic want at this point. Unicorns needs to send down the Maokai to clear this wave out before it becomes a problem, unless they want to sacrifice the whole thing to the tower. Nikis is in trouble. Yellowstone right over gone in, but it's Unicorns that have turned it around. Look at the back line. Fardax almost gets soloed out by Febivit. We do see that it is eventually going to be some kills onto Unicorns of Love. They've lost Fardax. They've They've lost Hillisite, they've lost Kikis, and Fevivin is the only reply so far. Fnatic find unicorns in their jungle. And Yellowstar can taste his fourth LCS split title. Fnatic on the inner top lane turret, and there's nothing the Unicorns can do. And I really like the fact he swapped away from Leona to the Nautilus, because when you're against the Lucian, he wants to jump around. You can dodge that Leona ulti. You cannot dodge the ulti from a Nautilus. It's going to follow you. It's going to knock you up. And Fnatic just has so many ways of getting to that backline of Unicorns of Love, the two damage dealers. Look at also, also the vision here. 10 green wards in the jungle, four pink wards around the Baron. They're gonna go straight back to it unless they wanna go and take a, a dragon first. And just keep setting up around that Baron, keep forcing Unicorns to either sit back in the base, give it up for free, or get into bad, bad team fights. How do you fight a fed rumble in the jungle when there's also an AoE of a Sivir, of an Ari? I mean, you can't. There's nothing for Unicorns around that Baron they can do. Well, Kikis is now being teleported on from Huni. No equalizer available. A little bit uh, preemptive, maybe, but he's very, very far ahead. 30 minutes. Fnatic are just going to play the baiting game. You already it's... have the vision, so yeah. Why even go Dragon in the first place? Smart move from Fnatic here. If Unicorn tried to trade it, well, that was fine as well. It's a second Dragon. I mean, who cares? So Fnatic just controlling it completely. Once again, bottom lane is pushing for the mob. Top lane is pushing mid lane. Tier 2 is open. And Fnatic says now, okay. Is to secure that easy objective at least. But they don't want to give up all these pings here. It's very important they defend the ping wards in the river because that's what creates the whole pressure. So just send down a few guys to do dragon. Rest can defend the river. Fisho, it is hunting season and Fnatic are hunting mythical beasts. They have got every single advantage needed to shut this game out. But they need to be decisive. They cannot afford to play like they did in game two and give the Unicorns time to scale. Fnatic, as you said, as long as they combo their ultimates, they can win, but you need to play 
It gets harder and harder smarter. for sure. Exactly, and that's the risk. That's the risk you play. If you play passive, but let's be honest, they're not. This no, is no, not no. the same game to Fnatic. This is really There's proof of it. Well played from them. Power of Evil showed bottom lane. Fnatic instantly put some damage onto the Baron, but they peel away. They're not fully committing. Well, as long as they stay around it, Unicorns is forced to do the same. Now it's been started. This is what we've been talking about. Nobody's moving yet. Yellow Star is trying to zone away in the bush just behind the red buff. It's gone. This Baron it's too late. is going down so fast. There you go. Well played by Fnatic. Hillisang stand behind me. Jumps on Ibiza Chachi. Forced to flash over to the Christ camp. Now Rain over and Yellowstar looking for more. The Command Protect goes under the tree, but it's not going to be enough. Kikis, Power of Evil, and Bardax join the rest of the Unicorns. But they now have to face a Baron empowered Fnatic squad. Power of Evil did pull the Shockwave, but he wasn't even close to the Baron for himself this time. Time is running out for the Unicorn to love. Time has run out, Deficio. Yeah, it's fair to say. Fnatic can just continue to strangle the life out of the Challenger squad. The number five seed coming into the playoffs. Memory serves. I believe Gambit was above them. They made it to the finals for the first time ever. First time upsetting the number one seed of SK. And that was also a miracle Baron Steel. And Fnatic are doing to Unicorns what Unicorns did to them in game four. It is just, just a whole flawless playoffs. execution. The whole playoffs. This was a team that went nine and nine in the split. And every week was the same talking point. They are so inconsistent. One. One day they win in 25 minutes, the next day they lose to MYM who ended up being relegated. It was so hard to say, what is the playstyle of Unicorns of Love? How good are they? So they faced Gambit in the first one, 3-0, after losing the first game. Beat SK Gaming in the final, everyone loves them, the name, everything. <laughs> so despite them being behind now and looking very, very bad in this game, it's still been one hell of a season for Unicorns of Love. That is for sure. We'll see whether or not they can find any magic left in the tank. How deep does their trough go? Fnatic take their sixth tower of the game. The last in a turret. There are only inhibitor turrets remaining. Kikis has set up from behind. Whoa! He manages to catch Whoa! Him up with it. A three no way! Run. They do get Featherfin before he can get anyone down. The power of evil loses his life. It's mid laner for mid laner. What can Vardax do? He's forced away from the team fight and steal back. He's just too far ahead. He chops down the tree of Pizzachachi and Fnatic take the inhibitor turret. They will get the inhibitor as well. Unicorns had a little bit of magic, but it was not enough. And Fnatic crack open the Unicorns base. Yeah, but that was like the best kind of engage for the Unicorns and it wasn't enough. I can't wait to see that again. Kick is sneaking in behind. Three-man ulti. Fabio Van still by Yellow Star. Everything pulled onto them. And yet Fnatic can still turn it around and win the fight. Baron plus 10k at Officio. That's what it looks like when you fight 4v5. Unicorns of Love, they're not done yet. There's a Chachi's running in. He's not going to find anybody, though. Trying to get a tower. This is the first of the game. 35 minutes on the clock. There are some minions pouring behind, but Fnatic, they're not giving this one up. Kikis, look at the damage from the Boomerang Blade. Sealback's got that Bloodthirster completed along with the last Whisper on the Hunt Throne. They want to defend the tower, but the minions will secure it. Hillisang in full retreat. Vizichachi goes forward. Feverman this time round. That is a four-man prison, but there's no... Look at the Rumble! Wave. Here comes Rumble. Equalizer is available. He throws it down on Vardax and Kikis. Vizichachi is down. Vardax is down. Hillisang is down and the Unicorns Shockwave! Down. Shockwave catches, but it's not going to be enough. Vizichachi... Well, the Kikis will be the next to fall, and Power of Evil is the last man standing. Super minions are inside the base of the Unicorns of Love, and Fnatic, they're pushing forward. They have 30 seconds on the clock, and they might be closing it out now. And what a great game from Fnatic here, playing it so well from the early game, and the way they adapted in the pick and ban phase. First pick, Sivir, meaning it's so hard to play scaling comps because you force these fights. Another kill. Power of Evil is down. There are no Unicorns left. There is no match. 
magic to believe in. Fnatic are the four-time champions of the European LCS. They're pushing out the next. Wait for it. It's happening again. It's happening again. Let's get back in it. Too early. No, it's just happening again. They defended the Nexus, or maybe not. Bodax is turning his attention to Rain Over. We've never played the victory music and had to turn it off until the Unicorns made it to the final. Rain Over is looking for Bodax. Challenging Spike was there. And we are back. All right, let's see what the Unicorns can do. Everyone thought it was over. This is unprecedented. They're still 10K gold behind, but every <laughs> kill matters for them. Vardak, six kills on the Lucian, but get a mid tower as well. They need that inhibitor to respawn. Baron is up in 140. That's gonna be the next big one. Fnatic can set up once again. They might be able to get two towers. For the Unicorns of Love, that's a lot of gold suddenly picked up. Pippen is here with Ulti. They have to respect him. Continues to look for more. There's the equalizer for the Chachi. Will go down. Four members of Unicorns now need to defend. He should secure a dragon here. Spirit Arash was used. Baron is up in a minute and 20. And now it's back to defend your Nexus. 4v5. 30 seconds more. When this happened in week eight, Unicorns defended it multiple times. <laughs> We're now doing it in week 12, in the final, in game five. Okay, okay, Fnatic, go into the topside jungle, place your wards once again, set up for that Baron and force Unicorns to come and face check you. You will get almost a guaranteed kill from the Ari Charm. She's so fed still. Steel bag as well on, on the saber. You have so much damage. Fivrin is going to push back the bottom lane. That opens up for Unicorn to set up around the Baron and suddenly avoid this pick here. Pick potential at least. Every single person on the floor is on their feet. The Cinderella story. <laughs> the Cinderella that turned her glass shoe into a weapon <laughs> and threw it at anybody hitting a Nexus. <laughs> Fnatic should still win. Fnatic should close this out. But they hadn't done it twice before. The only team that beat Fnatic 2-0 in the regular split was Unicorns of Love. And is that seed of doubt inside right. Fnatic's mind? Look at the wards Kiki's just placed. This ping board inside the Baron Pit will not spot the one just outside here. So they will see Fnatic if they start in. Fnatic has to place a ping outside or use the sweeper to clear these two wards. So at least they can see if Fnatic is starting it or if they're waiting in the jungle to pick off the Unicorns of Love. Don't take the bait and chase yellow star this time. The rest of Unicorns a little split up. Power and kick is moving through the red buff area of their jungle. Malasang lands the winter's bite. Nobody to follow. Kikis is caught out. He's trying to look for a team fight. Death is connects under Hillisang, though. That's not who they want. Where's the glacial prison? That's what we're looking for. Fish is available as well. Equalizer knocks everyone back with shock. Doesn't manage to get, but look at the prison. Where is Vardex? He's down. Fnatic are on the game-winning team fight. They managed to get four. They look to visit Chachi. It is an ace. Fnatic will now push under the Nexus. The death timers are too high. And the magic from Unicorns has finally run out. Such a good team fight again from Fnatic here. They just piled on to Power of Evil. He didn't even get to Ulti 40 minutes in on an Oriana. Fnatic have an uncontested Nexus. And they will finally win the Spring Split.
for the fourth time in five splits since the LCS began. Fnatic are the champions. And that man on your screen, on the left-hand side, Yellow Star, is the only four-time winner. Rebuilding Fnatic and what an after the departure of Xpeki and Soaz, an amazing uh, cyanide, rather. Yellow Star and Fnatic. There are yeah. no better kings of Europe. It's just a fantastic with the way they built this new lineup, the scouting and everything. Two Koreans coming in, Steelback from Challenger Scene, Febriven from H2K, young players. And then they go in and they perform so well over the entire split. And win the whole thing in the end. Of course we had to go to game five. But what a game five as well. We had to go to game five, we had to have a Nexus defense.